everyone. Welcome from Redding, California. This is Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. My name is Leslie Crandall, and we are so excited. We are hosting the presence of the Lord this afternoon. We wanted to invite the whole world into experiencing his presence and intimacy and encounter. Rebecca, tell us a little bit about what God's been doing. Yeah, we're just so excited about what the Lord is doing. I, I, Leslie, I feel crazy hope right now. Oh, look at us. We, this is just so much going on right now. The mic's back on again. Oh. You're going to hear from Amazing Leslie in just a second. But I just want to say we are so pumped. I want to welcome anyone that's watching right now. And it's not just from our Bethel community. This is people from all over the world. Uh, and we just feel very honoured that you would join us. And what a beautiful time to see the church united. And you didn't hear just before, but the this is... The whole world's united. Yes, it's yes. Crazy. This what, is Leslie Crandall, everyone, happening? by the way. I mean, I think my mic wasn't on, but <laughs> welcome from Redding, California, Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. We are just wanting to host what the Lord is doing amidst crisis. God shows up in the midst of all yes, of it. Yes, Amen. Yes, he is yes, the yes. Prince of Peace. Yes. And we are allowing Prince Jesus just to encounter us today in our student body. But we wanted to open this up to the whole world to just yes. encounter Him and His love. So wherever you are, I know people are going to be in their lounge rooms, in their bedrooms. I even said to our students this week, they're live streaming. I said, even in your hot tubs, wherever you might be uh, right now, and you might not be streaming today, maybe it's down the track, but we want to encourage you, engage with your spirit. The Holy Spirit is never been put in a box. Amen. He wants to move everywhere we are. And I believe, we believe that as we worship and, and encounter the Lord today, He's going to come so rich in our lounge rooms wherever we are. So join us. Thank you. Yep. We welcome you. We welcome you in this room, in living rooms. Oh, in lounge rooms, on our couches, in our beds, on our carpets, in our wood floors, we welcome you, we welcome you. <laughs> You're not a God that's divided by walls. You're not a God that's divided by walls. You're not a God that's divided by lines or borders. You're not a God right on time right on time hey. oh right on time come and fill us come and fill us come and fill us come and fill us fill the room fill the room fill the room Failure won't define me, cause 
that's what my father does. Come on. Prodigals, some prodigals 
Fill me up, God. Fill me up, you. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up. Like a still cup, fill me up. Holy Spirit knows no boundary. The Holy Spirit knows no quarantine. <laughs> the Holy Spirit can go wherever the Holy Spirit pleases. The Holy Spirit can fill any space at any time, whenever and wherever the Holy Spirit pleases. <laughs> And so right now, I pray for a baptism of the Holy Spirit in every 
room. Lord, we pray for houses of worship to ignite right now. Lord, I pray that as, as this social distancing and self-quarantining has actually spread people out to their homes, that you are actually spreading out hearts of worship all over cities and all over states, that, that there will be worship and, and the Holy Spirit infiltrating apartment complexes and neighborhoods. Lord, and I, I pray that the Holy Spirit begin to fall on neighborhoods as people begin to praise you and to lift up your name with thankfulness and adoration, Lord. And Lord, I pray for a, I pray for a John 20 experience for the world that as the disciples were, were, were hiding in a home in fear that Jesus came and he said, peace be with you. And he showed them his wounds and his scars. And then he said, be filled with the Holy Spirit and breathed on them. So Lord, I pray for a world right now who is hiding in their homes with fear that there be supernatural encounters of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Messiah, the Christ. Lord, I pray that Jesus enter the home and he responds to fear by showing himself. And he says, look at me, look at me. And as you look at me, I will breathe on your life and I will pray for a baptism of the Holy Spirit. God, I pray right now that everyone in their homes, everyone watching will be like Paul and Barnabas at the end of Acts 13, that as they see persecution, they just shake the dust off and are filled with joy, filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray right now that people begin to shake off the dust of this situation, shake off the dust of this circumstance, and I pray that the Holy Spirit fill you with joy. I pray that the Holy Spirit fill you right now. I pray for fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit, a fresh baptism. I pray for a, a, an infilling of you. Lord, I pray that you fill their houses with heaven. You fill their houses with your presence. I pray for radical encounters that you come in and you show yourself to them, God. I pray for fresh baptisms of fire and baptisms of joy. Wash us afresh. Wash us afresh. Lord, let your spirit break out. 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 Lord, come on. We want to know you. Show us your glory. Show us your glory, Holy Spirit.
living water from the well that never runs dry. Ephesians 3.20 says, Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all of this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for His miraculous power will constantly energize you. And now we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church in every generation through Jesus Christ. And all that will be will manifest through time and eternity. Amen. And we say, Jesus, You are worthy 
You are worthy. You are worthy of this moment. You are worthy of our uncomfortability. You are worthy of our praise in the midst of pain. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. And in the unknown, we say, Jesus, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our yes. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Just begin to lift your voices wherever you are. Begin to lift up the name of Jesus. And if you don't know what to say right now, just put His name on your lips. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You're the faithful one. You're the faithful one. You took our burdens. You were broken so that we don't have to be. You took our iniquity upon you. You paid the ultimate price for us, Jesus. And we're so thankful. We're so thankful. We're so thankful. Wherever you are right now, just begin to lift up the name of Jesus in the house in your bed when you're sitting down on your floor with your children right now as you're watching just lift up the name of Jesus if you're on your knees and you're confused right now just begin to lift up the name of Jesus join us wants to do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. And I wonder for a moment if you would join us right now by just finding a comfortable place wherever you find yourself. If you're not listening in a car, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes right now. Find somewhere comfortable, take a seat, lie down. You can stand in a posture of worship if that's what you feel comfortable to do. But just close your eyes for a second. And you can get comfortable, it'll be longer than a second. So often our imagination is used for purposes other than the kingdom of God. But right now, Jesus wants to advance His kingdom through your imagination right now. He wants to 
begin to invade your dream life. He wants to begin to speak to you through your imagination. And we're going to take that back this afternoon. And so just close your eyes in your comfortable spot right now. God wants to meet you. He's about to meet you. And in the busyness of life, sometimes the most unexpected moments or the places of, the, of my greatest pain have been moments where I found Jesus in the richest way. I've accessed a peace that I've never, ever found by scrolling on social media or meeting with a psychologist. I've accessed a peace that has surpassed any Thing I've encountered when I've listened to a preach or been in a worship set, I've met Jesus face to face. And right now in these unexpected times, the hunger of Jesus to meet with you has only increased. So just close your eyes. And I'm gonna lead you for just a moment if you'll allow me to. Jesus wants to meet you. And Jesus wants to introduce you to, his heaven, to the heavenly Father. God wants to meet with you right now. So we just release a joyful but a holy fear of God right now across every screen and every room, wherever you find yourself. We thank you, God. You're no respecter of persons. We welcome in the holy, weighty, joyful peace of God. I want to take you into Luke 30. Jesus had walked with the disciples and He had promised them many, many, many things. Perhaps you are carrying promises in your life right now. I want you to bring them to mind. Perhaps they were hopes based on other people's words or based on something you read in Scripture. Perhaps it's something you felt God Himself gave you. Maybe you even dreamed it up. I want you to bring to remembrance each of those promises and each of those hopes that you had, each of those dreams that you had. The disciples had some pretty radical promises from Jesus. And after their leader, their king, their savior, their security was crucified, they weren't carrying radical peace. Perhaps you're like them right now. They weren't walking with utter confidence. Perhaps you are shaky like them. And they hid themselves in a room, Luke 3 say, thir- <laughs> Luke 20 tells us that they locked the door. They were so afraid. I want you to imagine yourself in a room right now and your promises have walled you up. Every wall around you is a promise, a hope, a dream, maybe for situations right now. Perhaps you were meant to go on a trip and that got stopped. I want you to see the wall of that trip being stopped rise up around you right now. Perhaps you had a vacation in mind or a time of rest or you had a great strategy and plan for your life and it got stopped. A wall went up in front of you. I want you to see that wall go up around you. And as you saw every dream and hope or promise dashed or stopped or brought into a place of confusion, You might have been like the disciples and you walked to the door and instead of opening it up for hope and confidence and peace, you locked it out of fear. I want you to see that locked door right now. And the walls up around you. And as you're shivering or unsure, as you're nervous, wondering what's about to happen. I want to tell you that you're part of the family. You're just like the disciples, holy men. They didn't listen to a good word. 
They didn't pray themselves out of their fear. I want you to look at one of those walls, one of those promises. And instead of fixing it and instead of getting better or praying yourself out of it, Luke tells us that Jesus walked through the wall. Right now in the room that you're sitting at, in your mind's eye, in your imagination, Jesus is walking through that wall. He's unafraid of your fear. He's not afraid of your pain. He's not nervous of the promises that don't look like they're being fulfilled. Jesus is walking through your wall right now. He's not knocking. He's not waiting for you to open it up. He's walking. The Bible says suddenly Jesus walked through the wall. I want you to see Jesus walk through the wall right now. He's walking through the wall of disappointment. He's walking through the wall of delayed hope for your healing. He's walking through the wall right now of the marriage you thought that you would have that is on rocky ground. He's walking through the wall of pain when you were promised to do this, that, and the other, and it hasn't come to pass. Jesus is walking through your wall of fear. It's not too big for Him. It's not too strong. It's not too overwhelming. Jesus is unafraid of our walls. He wants to introduce Himself as the one who walks through your walls this afternoon. I hear Jesus saying that some of you are watching right now and you're about to watch Jesus walk through the wall of decades of pain, emotional pain. Jesus, watch Him walk through the wall of that emotional pain right now. And let me tell you about this Jesus as you watch Him walk through the wall. He answers every cry. Every promise is yes and amen in Him. The Word tells us that in this Jesus, in His power, we will never be put to shame. We will never be led into embarrassment. He is your covering today. He is your safety. He is walking in not to rebuke you, not to, to correct you, but to cover you, to protect you, to love you to empower you, to choose you. I want you to look at the face of Jesus. He is smiling at you. And as you look into His eyes, He is confident and sure. He's not questioning whether you deserve it or not. He's fully convinced that He has everything you need. It's not dependent on you right now. It's all dependent on Him. And as He walks through the wall, he said a word to the disciples. He said, peace be with you. And as you look into Jesus' eyes, peace is about to fill your body, your physical body. The pain subsides. The peace of Jesus increases. It's not just in your physical body. The peace of Jesus is flooding into your heart where fear had a loud voice. Jesus is not shouting it down. He's not disciplining it out. He's present with you. He's looking at you in the eye and He has so much peace. He can share it with you. He has everything that you need right now. The peace of Jesus begins to flood your heart. And every ounce of anger right now, Jesus is not afraid of your anger. I want you to watch your anger being pushed out of your heart, being cast out of your heart by the kindness and the love and the peace of Jesus. It is His kindness that leads us to repentance, that causes us to change. And now the peace of God floods your heart. And as you're sitting there or lying there or driving, listening to my voice right now, the peace of God is flooding your mind. Say this with me, in the name of Jesus, fear 
You are not in control. Jesus has walked through my wall. Jesus is king in my mind. Say this with me, heart. Fear no longer grips you. Fear's voice is no longer the loudest voice. Jesus has walked through my walls. His voice is the loudest in my heart. I want you to say physical body. Fear no longer controls you. Jesus has walked through my walls. He is in control. Peace be with you. We're gonna say this together one more time. Over every situation, over every unmet promise, over every dashed hope, say this with Jesus. Peace be with you. And as you feel things come into alignment right now with the Lordship of Jesus Christ, I want you to look into the eyes of Jesus because His eyes are on you. It says in the Psalms, His eyes are on you. And I want you to hear Jesus saying to you that everything I say, I've heard my Father say. Everything I do, I've heard my Father, I've seen my Father do. And I want you to know today, you are not abandoned, you are not alone, you are not isolated. The Father Himself, Father God, is here to protect, to love, to cover, and He is here to fight your battles. He is walking through your walls right now. He is walking through your walls right now. And in the Name of Jesus, we welcome in the love of the Father to begin to cover and flood and answer every question, to heal every disease, to satisfy every need, to provide for every request, for every resource to be met. We thank You for the power of the Father right now. And Jesus has one last thing to say to you this afternoon. You're doing so well. There was a man, his name was Thomas. The word says his nickname was twin, we call him the doubter. There's some of you as I'm speaking right now, that you say, surely, surely this is not taking place. Surely this isn't happening. Perhaps you are a believer. Perhaps you're one of our students. I have been there. I was there this morning. Jesus, is it really possible? Can it be? I want you to keep your eyes closed right now. I wanna tell you that Jesus right now, just like with Thomas, Jesus is gonna put your feet into, so to speak, Thomas's shoes. Thomas wasn't embarrassed about his fear. He said it out loud. He let everyone know God is not embarrassed about your doubts or your fears or your questions. And right now, I just want you to speak out your doubts. Just for five seconds, speak out your doubts and your questions right now, just boldly. Some of you are saying, God, I don't think you'll come through here. Others of you are saying, I'm unsure if you are as faithful as they say you are. You'll notice God's presence hasn't left you. The atmosphere in the room right now hasn't changed. God is not repelled by your doubt or your questions. It draws Him near. He is kind. He is strong. He is powerful. He is confident. He is safe. And as you speak out those doubts right now, I want you for a second time Jesus isn't just coming for you once. He's not coming for you twice. He's coming for you again and again and again and again. And right now, again, Jesus walks through your wall, your wall of doubt, your questions, everything you're unsure. Jesus just walked through that wall again. I want you to see Jesus walk through that wall right now. 
And instead of just words, Jesus says, I am a God of action. He invites Thomas. I want you to see yourself stand up in your mind's eye and move towards Jesus. Move towards Him with your questions. Move towards Him with your doubt. And I want you to hear Jesus say the words He said to Thomas. You may touch my wounds. You may see that I have done what I said I would do. I promised you I would die for your sin. I promised you I would be victorious. Here I am. Some of you right now are having visitations with Jesus. He's showing you the wounds in His hands and in His side. He's showing you the truth of what He's done. Others of you need a promise from Him. You need action from Him. Right now, Jesus is releasing to you the reality of what you've done. There were moments right now you said, God, you weren't there for me when I was five. Jesus right now is showing you like He showed Thomas, I was standing right in front of you. I was with you the whole time. And He's about to show you right now, just begin to see what He was doing in that moment. He never left you. He never forsook you. He was right there the whole time. Jesus is unlocking for you what He's done, what He did do. And right now, I want you to feel the cloak of safety. I want you to see Jesus looking you in the eye. He's coming towards you. He came towards Thomas. He's coming towards you. He's not repelled by your doubts or your fear. He's walking in. He's walking in. He's walking in. He's walking in. And for a moment, just place your hand on your heart right now. This is something we do often in BSSM. And I'm going to pray over you. In the name of Jesus, I welcome in the radical pursuit of Jesus. I speak into hearts right now in Jesus' name and I say whether they are doubting Thomases like I was this morning or whether they are afraid disciples, Jesus, You are coming after them. You are pursuing them. You are revealing Yourself to them. You are making Yourself known. And in the name of Jesus, the kindness of the Father is coming after you. The goodness of Jesus is chasing you down and He is showing you who He is. I hear Jesus saying right now, I want to encounter you. I want to show you the reality of who I am.
shepherd, my rock, you are my fortress and my shield, you're the defender of my heart, oh Lord, my God, you are my shepherd.
I walk through the valley the shadow of death I'll fear no evil for you are with me oh your rod and your staff your eyes and your hand they comfort me oh they comfort me you make a table So many other places you could have put it, but you prepare a table. Come to the table, come to the table, come to the table. Come to the table, come to the table.
bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Oh, yes. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you.
Holy Spirit. Thank You that Your love has no bounds, that there is absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing that can stand in between us and the power of Jesus Christ. And right now, we declare this song over families, wherever you are in the nations, wherever you are, we declare this as a promise from the Father over our families in the Name of Jesus. I wanna read from Romans 8. It says, for God has made us to be more than conquerors, amen. And His demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I am convinced that His love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken His love. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. And I declare today, Jordan and I are here to declare that there is absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing that can stand in between you and the lavish, lavish love of Jesus Christ. So Jesus, as confident sons and daughters of the Most High God, we come together today in unity and we speak death over the coronavirus. We say that it must die in Jesus' Name and that nothing, 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 no virus, no sickness, no fear, no nothing can stand against the mighty love of Jesus Christ and everything that you paid for on that cross in the Name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus, we pray for a sudden and quick end to this virus. Lord, we pray that Your Spirit come. We pray that Your presence come. Lord, we pray for those who are in self-quarantining, God. We pray for those who are in their homes who, who have been affected by this virus. And Lord, we display healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we, play, we plead your blood to wash them and to cleanse them. Lord, we pray for the healing power of Jesus to just touch their bodies right now. And Lord, we pray that you eradicate this virus out of people's bodies. We pray for a quick and sudden healing. We pray for a quick and sudden end to this virus in the name of Jesus. Yeah, and if you're battling with any other sickness right now, because our God is so extravagant in His love, we're not even just praying only for this virus right now. We've already had people writing in and telling us that they're experiencing healing in their bodies. So if you're experiencing healing in your bodies, go ahead, put that in the group chat right now. But Lord, we thank You right now for Your extravagant love, pouring over any sickness, any disease right now, any infirmity, anything, anything that would try and stand up against the power of Jesus Christ. We take our authority over right now in Jesus' name. Yes, we, we remember the story of the centur centurion who came to Jesus and said, please, my servant is sick. And Jesus said, it's because of your faith, it will be done. And in that moment, the servant was healed. Jesus didn't have to come. No one did, had, didn't, didn't need to lay hands on that person, but it was the, it was the presence of of the Holy Spirit that came and touched that servant and immediately healed him. So right now, wherever you are, in your, in your bedroom, in your living room, at your friend's house, whatever going on, Lord, we pray right now for the healing presence of Jesus Christ to touch them right now. And more than just the virus, Lord, we pray for this to spark a massive healing revival all over the world that your presence come and begin to touch and become to heal, Lord. Lord, I just pray right now that people with scoliosis, their spine begin to straighten right now. People with uh, skin problems like psoriasis, that you begin to wipe away the psoriasis, you, that your healing touch begin to cleanse their skin in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Lord, we pray for those with liver conditions right now to be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, let healing break out that as houses of worship arise all around the world, that healing would also break out. And that as people look to you and seek your face, and that as they see you rightly and begin to praise you with thanksgiving and adoration, that healings would just spontaneously begin to happen. It would happen in homes and apartments. It would happen in duplexes, Lord. Lord, I pray that neighborhoods would be touched by the healing power of Jesus because of people in their homes worshiping you. Lord, let your name be glorified all over the earth. Yeah, so we're going to sing this again. So if you can, just wherever you are, just as an act of faith, why don't you stand to your feet, get on your knees, do something. We're going to come together in unity right now. We're going to declare this over the nations, over the nations. We're believing that as we worship, as we pray, people all over the nations are being healed. People all over the nations are encountering the mighty love of God. I even just declare right now, people are coming home. They're coming home to know Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. We magnify your name. having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile. He made it, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. When he disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them through the cross. And what I wanna to declare today is that this virus will be made a public spectacle through the cross in Jesus' name. That Jesus will become the public eye, that the world would see that He would be lifted up as He is drawing all men unto Himself. Lord, we thank You that what the enemy meant for evil, God, You are turning around and You are drawing the world into Your arms. And so, Father, we thank You for a great awakening of the world, not just America, not just China, but the entire world that you are drawing to yourself. Jesus, we thank you that you made a public spectacle of all of our enemies. And we declare coronavirus, you must bow to the name of Jesus. He is King. He is Lord. And we declare today that this would come to an end and that your love would pull the whole world close to your son. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, body of Christ. Whoever's joining us today, we thank you for joining us, and we bless your family. Amen. Thank you, guys. Bless you.